Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good. In this video, we are going to talk about some big changes ahead that will change the face of Express Entry system. These changes are so big that the complete infrastructure of the Express Entry system would be changing. So we'll be talking about all the questions, what are those changes, when these changes might be applicable, why these changes are necessary, how this would actually affect all those people who are there in the Express Entry pool and who would actually be affected. So we'll talk about all these questions in this video. If you're interested, stay tuned. And guys, before we discuss about it in detail, I quickly want to remind you to subscribing to the new channel Dreamers Abroad. That's the new Hindi vlogging channel. Do not forget to click the subscribe button on this and also follow me on Instagram by the same name Dreamers Abroad. All right, so let's start with the what. What is the actual change all about? So in the Express Entry Pool, we know that there are all sorts of people from different occupations, from different skill sets. And right now they have been classified as per the NOC codes defined in 2016. NOC stands for National Occupational Qualification. So until now, all the different skills were divided into five types, skill type zero, skill level A, skill level B, level C and level D. Now going forward, the structure of 2021 NOC would be a lot different. They would be called tier category 0, category 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this is basically the structural change that we are going to talk about in this video. Now what are these categories? How will they actually impact the eligibility of candidates in the express entry pool? We'll talk about that in this video. Okay, now let's talk about when these changes would be applied. So talking about the express entry, there hasn't been any official confirmation from IRCC until now. But Statistics Canada, which is another government body, has released this new classification of NOC of 2021. The NOCs are actually reviewed every year and updated every five years and it gets overhauled every 10 years, making this new edition the biggest upgrade since 2011. And because Statistics Canada has already published it, so IRCC would also give its confirmation, but they would take their own time to design the process around these new NOCs. They would give the candidates their time and it is expected that these changes would be applicable somewhere in fall of 2022, which is around an year from now. So they would give ample amount of time to the candidates and publish these changes well in advance so that everyone is aware about it. Okay, now why these changes were necessary? So Statistics Canada has told that defining occupations on skill levels is kind of confusing as the NOC actually focuses on occupations and not skills. Introducing the tier system will focus on the education and experience required to work in a given occupation. And apart from that, the previous NOC categorization system artificially creates a low versus high skilled categorization. This redesign moves away from the high to low categorization to more accurately capture the skills required in each occupation. So this new system would actually be more accurate in terms of the skills that people actually have instead of the occupations. Okay, now let's talk about how this will actually impact the candidates in the express entry pool. So as of now, the FSW and CEC candidates need to have work experience in skill type 0, skill level A and skill level B in order to be eligible for the express entry system and similarly the federal skilled trade candidates need to have experience in all of these major groups listed down here i've taken these screenshots from the official website of government of canada canada.ca but now going forward these eligibility criteria would change because because these different skill levels would be changed by different tier categories that i told you earlier about so in the next few months time, whenever this gets implemented by IRCC, then the candidates should ensure that their, that their new NOC codes actually corresponds with the eligibility criteria of their program that they're applying to. TA categories 0, 1, 2 and 3 are there for CEC and FSW and category 4 and 5 are there for FSTC. We don't know, this was just an example. IRCC would definitely define it very clearly on their website and as and when they decided, I'll certainly update you with the new eligibility criteria for these express entry programs. What one concern that the Statistics Canada has shown is about skill level B. According to them, this grew actually grew very large over time as it includes 
occupations that require varying degrees of education and experience. So all those candidates whose job or occupations actually belong to skill level B, you specifically need to watch out for the updated eligibility criteria going forward. But as I told you, at this point, it is not known which tier categories will be eligible for the express entry programs and also for different provincial programs because this certainly means a big change in the eligibility criteria that we can expect in the future. Okay, now let's talk about the how. How these would be distributed and how these new tier categories would be structured. So first of all, we see the comparison here between NOC 2016 and NOC 2021. We see clearly here that 42% actually belong to skill level B. So this certainly is one of their concerns. And going forward, when there would be six categories, then we see this category two, which would still have 31%, but other categories would have somewhere from around 9% to 19%. Okay, now when you scroll down on this page, you'll find some detailed explanations of how these new knock codes would be structured. I won't go into too much detail, but quickly trying to give you an idea of this. So they say here that tier actually stands for training, education, experience, and responsibility. So tier zero would probably be for management. Tier one would be for completion of a university degree or previous experience and expertise in subject matter knowledge from a related occupation found in tier two. So what is tier two? Completion of a post-secondary education program of two or three years at Community College Institute of Technology or CEGEP or completion of an apprenticeship training program of two to five years or occupations with supervisory or significant safety responsibilities or several years of experience in a related occupation from tier three. And similarly, they have defined tier three, tier four and tier five as well. I'll provide a link to this page in the description box below. If you're interested, you can definitely check it out. But guys, this is all what I wanted to talk about in this video. Yes, ILCC would be defining it in terms of the eligibility criteria for express entry system going forward. And when they do it, I'll certainly update you. So do not forget to click the subscribe button for this channel. Thanks a lot for watching this video.